Hi, I'm Nigel Atherson from What Digital Camera Magazine, and today we're looking at the Nikon D90 DSLR, the successor to the hugely popular D80. Now, the D90 has a whole host of improvements over the D80. Firstly, there's now a 12 megapixel uh, CMOS sensor rather than a CCD compared to the D10 megapixel of the uh, D80. It's, as I said, it's a CMOS sensor, not a CCD, which is the same used in all the professional level uh, Nikon cameras. It also has a high resolution. A uh, 3 inch 920,000 dot LCD screen, also as used in the D300, D700, and above. Uh, there's the addition of Live View, uh, a dust reduction system, and the most controversial uh, of all is it's the world's first DSLR with HD video mode built into it. There's also the option with the D90 of having the new Nikon kit lens, which is an 18 to 105 millimeter VR lens. Now this isn't it, we've got the, uh, the longer 18 to 200 mil lens uh, fitted on here, but the, uh, the 18 to 105 is also a VR lens, which is, I believe is probably the most generous kit lens offering available, uh, certainly that Nikon have offered. The design of the camera is, will be very familiar to anyone that's used any of the previous Nikon cameras. As you can see here, this is the top plate of the camera. As you can see the controls, again you've got the on-off button, the LTD data display on the top there, uh, the uh, metering patterns, the exposure compensation, the drive mode button and the focusing, the auto focusing uh, mode button over this side and on this side you've got the exposure the mode dial which has the usual program, shutter speed aperture, manual and the, uh, the scene modes on the other side of the dial. The back of the camera you can see that there's a now dedicated live view button here to the top right of the LCD screen which uh, when you press it immediately goes into, into live view mode and uh, you can press half, half pressure on the shutter will, uh, will focus that for you. This is also of course what you need to do if you want to use the video mode which we'll come on to in a moment. You can see the controls on the back of the camera here, you've got the, the review button, the delete button at the top, then you've got your menu, your magnify buttons, uh, you can also set the white balance, ISO and uh, quality down this side and there's an info button for looking at the data, shooting data now in live view mode, when you press the info button, you get a variety of viewing options, including a grid, which is quite good for centering horizons and architecture and that sort of thing, and uh, various other, other modes. If you go out of live view mode and you look at a picture you've just taken, let's look at one we've just taken there, uh, you've got all your shooting data as well. Now it's through the live view mode that you'd access video, and you press the OK button in the centre of the control pad, not the shutter button. And if I press that button there, Press that button. Now we are now recording video. Now the, the video on this camera is quite limited. Uh, it is the first camera to offer it, so I suppose we have to be grateful, but uh, it's manual focus only and you're limited to five minute clips in the highest resolution mode, or you can go down in resolution and get 20 minute clips, which should be adequate for most people. I think if you're, generally speaking, 15 minutes of video without any cuts it would be quite boring to watch for, for an audience. So. Generally speaking, five minutes should be enough for most people. I'll turn that off now. That's to stop the recording. And then to, to view it, of course, you go back and as you would view a still picture, press the play button and there it is. And you press the OK and you can view press what you've just shot. And that's enough of that. Now, in, there are two uh, video shooting modes. There's 1280 by 720, which is the high, not true high definition, but the high, what they get away with calling high definition. And there's also a VGA resolution, 640 by 480 resolution, which is what gives you the longer clips. So what other features does the camera have? Well, it has a focusing system that uses 11 focusing points using Nikon's multicam focusing system. Uh, there's an ISO range of 200 to 3200, which is extendable to 100 and to 6400. There's also active delighting in the camera. This, this has been extended actually in the camera now. There's an auto version, an auto level, a low, normal, high and extra high level. Um, and the, the active delighting expands the dynamic range of the picture so it recovers detail in the shadows and the highlights, which is very useful for high contrast uh, sub-shooting situations. Again, the menu on the Nikon cameras is usually very intuitive, very easy to follow. Uh, on the left hand side you've got various uh, there's folder options and this is the shooting menu where you've got uh, picture controls where you can set for example a normal or a vivid or a neutral or a monochromatic uh, style of shooting 
Um, in here you find image quality, image size, white balance, ISO, those are also of course on the outside of the camera as well. Um, active delighting is accessed through here and um, you've got your noise reduction and various other options. You can, to go to the playback menu, you can uh, just go up like this and then you have your various options there. It's a very intuitive system. Um, it'd be familiar to anyone that's used any of the other Nikon DSLRs. Now there is an optional battery grip that you can get for the camera as well, which takes two of these uh, lithium ion batteries. Now with a single battery, you can get over 2,000 shots uh, per charge. If you use the grip, it takes two of these batteries and that'll give you 4,000 shots per charge. And it'll also let you shoot at four and a half frames a second, which is pretty good for a camera like this. Okay, now then this body is uh, very much styled, very similarly to the, the D80. There are very few uh, uh, external changes to the camera. This is Nikon's mid-range sized camera. There's a smaller Nikon camera style in the D40 and D60 type bodies. And then there's this size, the, the D300 is a bit bigger still, and then of course it goes into the professional cameras. This is a great size camera really for the enthusiast photographer. It's not too heavy, it's not too small in the hand. It handles very well, it's well built, it's aluminium. Um, frame with a plastic, although it's plastic, it's a very solid, solidly, solidly built camera um, and it feels very good in the hand. All the buttons are exactly where you want them to be. These two over here are a little bit, I'd say a little bit fiddly, the, which is the drive mode button and the focus mode button. If you're trying to access those, you've got to press this down and you've got to turn this dial, which as you can see is a little bit of a fiddly operation. Um, thankfully it's not, uh, these aren't the buttons you need to access all the time, unlike the exposure compensation and uh, the other buttons. Now, of course, much is made of the video modes on the D90, but, but it's the actual image quality of the stills, which is the really impressive part of the camera. Uh, pictures are outstanding. The, uh, in fact, Nikon, what Nikon have done is they've actually incorporated many of the features that you get in the D300 and cameras above that into the D90. So the, at the, for the first time for this kind of price point, which is around the £600 mark, you're getting the functionality and features um, that you get in the, sub, the, the cameras that are over a thousand pounds. So as a result, this shows in the quality of the images that you're getting. And really, um, I think people who are considering buying the D300 may think twice and they may look at the D90 because it's, uh, the quality is really getting up there. The exposures are almost entirely consistent um, and well balanced. The, the dynamic range is, is excellent. Of course, you've got the, the active delighting to uh, help you there if, if you need the extra help. Uh, white balance is fairly faultless. Um, Occasionally, when you're taking one, two consecutive shots, uh, the white balance changes between one and the other, and I think that's because the, the camera uses a scene recognition and uh, face recognition systems to detect what type of subject it is, and uh, sometimes frame to frame, the camera may uh, change its mind about what, what it is it's photographing. This isn't uh, a big problem, but uh, it does occasionally happen. Overall, uh, the image quality is exceptionally good. The noise is well controlled. The sharpness with, the, with any, either of the kit lens options is very, very good. Uh, it has a great viewfinder, a great LCD screen, the metering is good, the focusing is quick. On, on the negative side, the video mode is obviously it's the first implementation of this in a DSLR and of course it does have its limitations, it's not great, it's manual focus only, you're limited in, in, in short clips, it's only mono sound, um, but it's good for, it's an extra, it's, of course it's on the camera, it's, uh, it's there if you want to use it, it's not going to replace a video camera but it's great to have it uh, for those occasions where you want to do a bit of a video clip. All in all, it's an exceptionally good camera, great value for money for, for, the, for what you're getting. You're getting what really 90% of the D300's functionality in, the, in this camera for around £600, which is extremely good. And uh, we give it a score of 91% and a gold award.